Okay, welcome to second part of Unit 6, where we're going to look at the remaining two uh, symmetry operators. The, the first one is called the inversion operation. It is given the symbol I, and what we need to look for here is that the molecule must have a center of symmetry. So you should be able to look at the molecule and say, okay, there's a center and all the atoms around that central uh, atom um, are equivalent. And what will happen is that each point will be inverted through the center of the molecule to a position that is opposite to the original position with equal distance from the inversion point. So if we have a look at the example in the picture on the left, on the right, if we take uh, atom number one, that's over here. If we invert it, it is going to go from where it currently is now to position number six, which is exactly what we see down here. Okay, and all the other atoms must be able to do exactly the same thing. So in other words, it means we now have atom number two must move to position number four which it does over here, okay? And lastly, um, atoms number three and five are, are going to need to switch places, okay? So we end up seeing that this is the case over here. So that shows us that the center of inversion, the inversion operation is right there and it's labeled with a yellow, or with a red dot in the center. There are a number of examples that we can have a look at that show the inversion operation. The first one is um, ethane. Okay, so I'm not going to do this with you because you're going to be doing a practical uh, on a website that will show you uh, various examples like this. But um, you can have a look at this one. So it's H, uh, C, and then there should be triple bond. And you can see that that should have a center of inversion. The center of inversion will be right in the center over here. Okay. The second example, which we you will do, and we'll do it on the next slide, is the staggered version of um, e ethane. And benzene also has a center of inversion. And, and then I'm going to show you an example with methane where it may look like we have a center of inversion, but there is no center of inversion at all. All right, so here is the example where we compare uh, ethane with methane. All right, now the diagram on the left-hand side shows that there is a center of inversion right over here. Okay, because what am I able to do? If you look carefully, you will see that H1 and H6 swap places in the bottom diagram over here, okay? And H, let me change color quickly for you, H2 and H5 swap places in the diagram at the bottom. And lastly, H3 and H4 swap places in the diagram at the bottom. Okay, so that must mean that there is a center of inversion, and like I said to you, it sits right over here, in the center between the two carbon atoms of ethane. And that's only for the staggered uh, version um, of ethane. If you look now at the methane molecule on the right, this diagram here, there is no center of inversion because nowhere can the hydrogen atoms switch places such that if we were to apply, let's choose, for example, H1, okay? If we implied a center, uh, uh, an, an inversion operation, it would mean that H1 would end up over here. But if you look carefully at the geometrical orientation 
of the methane molecule, you'll see it's not the same. So that means there is no inversion. Okay, remember what a symmetry operation does. It's the molecule has to end up in the same orientation after the symmetry operation has been applied. If you look on the left-hand diagram, you will see that the molecular orientation of the ethane molecule is identical after the symmetry operation of inversion has been applied. But with methane, that is not true. Okay. Also, what we need to be very careful of is to, not to confuse an inversion operation with a twofold rotation. Okay. Sometimes what happens is that the two operations appear to have the same effect. But in general, this is not true. And let me try and explain this to you using the diagram on the left. All right. What we need to do we need to start here in the center. Okay. Now, if you look at this molecule, you will see that it has both an inversion center and a two-fold rotation axis. All right, let's do the inversion first. By doing the inversion, we're going to start at the center and we're going to then move to the top diagram here. If I'm going to do this, what you need to do is look at one color of the atoms that have been uh, designated. So I'm going to pick the um, the orange the orange atom over here. Okay, I'll even use an orange pen so that you can see. If I apply the inversion operation, it means that the orange atom will move to the position over here. And if we look at the top diagram, you will see that the orange atom has moved because I've applied the inversion operation that exists between the two gray atoms. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is show you how the twofold rotation works. Okay, and if I, and for this instance, we'll start in the center diagram and I'm going to choose the blue atom and I'm going to rotate that atom 180 degrees. And by rotating it 180 degrees, you're going to see that it's going to end up in that position, which it does over here. Okay, but if I look at the molecules, um, this one and this one here, they, they are not the same. The positions of the atoms have not uh, gone to the same position. What this effectively means is that the inversion operation is exactly an independent operation of the twofold rotation, even though it looks like it's the same. The molecular orientation of the two um, operations is, is identical, but the positions of the atom is not the same. Okay, let's go on to the last symmetry operation an element that we look at. And this is called the improper rotation. What is an improper rotation? An improper rotation is simply a rotation followed by a reflection. It has the symbol S. It has the same notation as a proper rotation, which had the symbol C. And remember that the subscript describes the principal rotation and the superscript describes the number that we can go through. Okay, for right now, let's just see what does this thing do. Okay, it is a rotation through a 360 degree divided by N rotation, followed by reflection through a plane that is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Okay, and it generates one final position, not Two. So if we looked at the diagram on the right hand side here, here we see that we have a fourfold rotation. That's what this box means over here. This box that you see, little square, means that there's a fourfold rotation. Okay, and what we can do if it's a fourfold rotation, 360 degrees divided by 90, sorry, divided by 4 gives me 90. That means that I can turn the molecule through 90 degrees and then I can reflect the 
um, molecule to give me the orientation of the molecule in exactly the same position again. So if I did that, let me pick one color again. Okay, so I'm going to pick the orange atom. Okay, and I'm going to rotate the orange atom by 90 degrees. And that means it's going to come up to this position over here. And if I look here, you'll see there, there is where it ends up. Okay. Here is where my mirror plane is. So this is my mirror plane. It's a vertical mirror plane. Okay, so it, we can donate it as sigma v. And as soon as we do the reflection, if we follow the reflection of the orange atom to the mirror, you will see that the orange atom is going to be reflected to a position over here. And we end up with a final position of the orange atom over here. Now, if I look at the orientation, the geometrical orientation of this molecule here and this molecule here, they are identical, which means that it's been returned to its original position, even though the atoms have switched places. Um, we, we need to understand that the positioning, the geometrical orientation is the same afterwards. All right, if this picture on this slide is a little confusing, let's have a look at what happens on the, the following slide. Okay, this may help you to see it a little better. All right, so we start over here and we have, this is now called an S4. Okay, an S4, S for an improper rotation because I can rotate the molecule by 90 degrees, which is what the first thing does. Okay, and if, you, if you're able to do this, build your models using your model geometry set that you got last year in Chemistry 1B and actually try to follow this procedure in this slide, follow this procedure and then this procedure and see that you end up with the molecule in exactly the same position. So we're going to turn this 90 degrees. So that means that this atom is going to come into this position, which it does over here. OK, so these atoms are now in this position and these the atoms over here in this position here have now ended up like this. OK, and then we're going to do the reflection, the, the red uh, plane that you see there is the reflection and you'll see that you end up with the molecule in exactly the same geometrical orientation as mm. we started with. So this is just another view to help you see the S4 uh, operation. Now it might be easy for us to see and do the example uh, with methane um, to show that there are three S4 operations uh, in the molecule itself. All right, I'm only going to do two with you because you can try the last one for yourself. OK, let me pick a nice color and I'm, we're going to follow atom number H1. OK, so it's easy now to see that the methane molecule, we can fit the hydrogen atoms on the corners of the cube, OK, with the carbon in the center. And as is showing to you, the S4 rotation runs directly through the molecule like that. OK, so we're going to turn the, the, the molecule by 90 degrees, which means that H1 over here is going to end up in this position over here. OK, so we've turned it by 90 degrees. That's the first thing. Remember, it's the improper rotation is a rotation followed by a reflection. So the H1 has now ended up on the this corner of the cube here. OK, and now we're going to apply the horizontal uh, mirror, which you can see is the blue plane running through the center of the cube over here. There it is. There. OK. And now we perform the reflection and you'll see that atom number H1 moves to this corner of the cube and the molecule as a whole ends up in the same orientation as it started with. So this was the starting orientation. 
and this was the finishing orientation. You can see that the methane molecule is in the same geometrical orientation. Okay, now let's continue to follow H1. And in the next slide, I will just highlight where we ended up with. So there is H1, and we're going to do exactly the same thing. Okay, H1. There it is. Okay. So follow with me on the bottom half of the diagram. Again, we are going to turn the molecule by 90 degrees. That means that H1 over here is going to move to the back corner of the cube over there. Okay, that's the first 90 degree rotation. And now we have the horizontal mirror plane in the same position as it has been before. It doesn't move. The mirror plane stays in the same position and we can then uh, do the reflection operation and see that H1 now ends up in that corner and the original orientation of the molecule, remember we started in this position, is exactly the same as us ending up in that position there. Of course you could do it for the third uh, S4 as well as an extra exercise. I leave that for you to try on your own. Remember guys that you can stop the video at any point, go back and follow what I've done and also don't forget to ask me questions about this on the WhatsApp group.